Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to show you another example of how to calculate the covariance matrix. In this case, we're going to have five data sets of three measurements. In this case, it's going to be the scores of some students, how they scored on math, on physics, and on English. Notice there's five students, one, two, three, four, five, and three sets of scores, math, physics, and English. The total scores for math would be 300, the total scores for physics would be 250, the total scores for English would be 350, and then this would be the average or the mean scores of all the five students in each of the three categories. But what we're trying to do here is calculate the covariance matrix in such a way that we can do this with computer programs. Therefore, we must do it with matrices. So we've built a matrix that contains the scores, and let me put up here, this would be the scores for math, the scores for physics, and the scores for English. You see these are the scores. Now we subtract from that matrix the what we call unity matrix, where we have ones for all diagonals and all the columns here, multiply times this same matrix. Why do we do that? Well, let's see what happens when we multiply this matrix times this matrix. We multiply this row by this column, so, and we add them together, that's 90 plus 90 plus 60 plus 30 plus 30. That gives us the total scores each time we do that. We then multiply the total scores times 1 fifth, which gives us the average score. In other words, what we get here is this gives us the average score, and then we're subtracting the average score from the initial matrix to give us the difference between the scores and the average scores are the means. That's the matrix called the deviation matrix, and we'll use the small a to denote the deviation matrix. So the small a is called the deviation matrix, which is the difference between the average scores and the individual scores. So when we do that, we get 90 minus 60, that would be the element we get in here. So 90 minus 60, that would be 90 minus 60 again, that's 30. We get the, the average, um, we get the 60 minus the average 60, which is 0. The average, that would be 60 minus, oh, I'll take that back. It'll be the reading 30 minus the average 60, that is minus 30, and 30 minus 60, which is minus 30. So these are the differences between the mean and the scores of the individual student. Notice that when the scores are less than the average, we get a negative. When the scores are bigger than the average, we get a positive. We do that again for the physics scores. The average physics score is 50. The reading here is 80. So we get 80 minus 50, which is 30. 60 minus 50, which is 10. 50 minus 50, which is 0. 40 minus 50, which is minus 10. And 20 minus 50, which is minus 30. Again, those are the differences between the average scores and the scores of the individual students. Finally, we do it again for English. The average score is 70. So we have 40 minus the average 70, that is minus 30. Uh, 80 minus 70, that's a minus, oop, that's a plus 10. 70 minus 70, which is 0. 70 minus 70, which is 0. And 90 minus 70, which is a positive 20. So those are the differences between the average, the mean, and the, in, and the individual scores. Now to find the covariance, what we have to do here is to find the covariance matrix. We take the deviation matrix, we take the transpose of the deviation matrix, multiply times the deviation matrix, and we get the covariance matrix. It's almost magical. It's a lot easier than what we saw in the previous video where we worked it out arithmetically one number at a time. So let's go ahead and do that. So we take this matrix right here and we take the transpose of that. So we'll look as follows. 30. So what we do here is we take this column and turn it into the first row. So 30, 30, 0, minus 30, and minus 30. So the matrix looks like this. Now we take the second column and make it into the second row. That's 30, 10, 0, minus 10, and minus 30. And finally we take the third column and turn it into the third row row, that's minus 30, 10, 0, 0, and 20. Then we multiply that times the actual matrix, what we call the deviation matrix. So we have 30, 30, minus 30, 30, 10, 10, 0, 0, 0, 
the minus 30, minus 10, and 0, and minus 30, minus 30, and 20. When we do that, we get the covariance matrix, which will have nine elements. We'll have the diagonal elements and the off-diagonal elements. When we multiply this together, so to get the first element, we multiply this row times this column. That would be 900 plus 900 is 1800, 0. That's 2700, that's 3600. So this element is 3600. To get the second element at the top row, we now take this row, multiply times this column. So that would be 900, that's 1200, 0. That's 1500, and another 900, that's 2400. Goes in here. It takes a little while, but bear with me. So there's only nine elements total. Now we multiply this row times this column. That gives us minus 900 plus 300 is minus 600. That's zero, that's zero. And another minus 600, that's minus 1200. Okay, we got the first three elements. Now we drop down to the second row, first column. 900, that's 1200, zero, that's 1500. And another 900, that's 2400. Actually, when we're smart about it, we know that when we flip these diagonal elements over here, I should say the off-diagonal elements over here, we get exact duplicates. So we know that this is going to be 2400, and we know that this is going to be minus 1200. All right, for the middle element right here, it's the middle row and the middle column. 900, that's 1,000, that's 0, that's 1,100, that's another 900, that is 2,000. For this element right here, we need the second row and the third column. So second row, that's minus 900, that's minus 800, that's zero, that's zero, and minus 600, that's minus 1400, I believe, 900, 800, yep, minus 1400 for over here, which means we get a minus 1400 over here. And finally, for this element right there, we take the third row and the third column, that's a positive 900, that's a thousand, zero, zero, another 400, that's a positive 1400. And there we have our covariance matrix. Remember that the diagonal elements are the variances of the three individual scores. So the variance of the MAT score is 3600. That means there is the largest variance. If you see, that's the largest number of the three. The largest variance is in the math scores, the second largest variance is in the physics scores, and the third largest variance is in the English scores. Now what the off-diagonal elements, what do they mean? Well here we have the covariance between the first one, which is math. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and draw this out like this. So the first one would be math against math. This would be math compared to physics, and this would be math compared to English. On the second one, we have physics compared to math, we have physics compared to physics, we have physics compared to English, and finally, we have English compared to math, English compared to physics, and English compared to English. That's really the way you want to look at it. It's the comparison between math and physics, math and English, English and math, and so forth. So the diagonal elements are simply the variances of math, physics, and English. The largest number represents the largest variance. On the off diagonal elements, we compare the variances of the, or the, the variation of the math versus the physics. In other words, there is a relationship between the variation in math and the physics that is positive, which means if it's positive, that means when the math scores go up, the physics scores go up, and when the math scores go down, the physics scores goes down. But in other words, a person that scored high on math tended to score high on physics. High on math, high on physics. High on math, high on physics. Low on math, low on physics. Low on math, low on physics. So a positive covariance means that they tend to vary in the same direction, so to speak. If you score high on math, you score high on physics, that gives you a positive covariance. But now take a look between, let's say, physics and English. That would be uh, this one right here, that is a negative covariance. There it shows that people who score high on physics tend to score low on English. People that score low on physics tend to score high on English. So there's a 
inverse relationship between the variance in physics and the variance in English, and that gives us a negative quantity. So negative covariance elements simply mean that the, that the variation is in opposite directions. If one scores high on one, it's tended to score low on the other. Score low on one tends to score high on the other. If they tend to score high on both, they have a positive covariance. If one is high and the other one is low, it tends to be a negative covariance. So that's the meaning of the covariance elements. And that gives us a perfect example here because we can relate to having scores in math, physics, and English, of course. But in the end, this is your covariance matrix. This is that P matrix. And notice how easy it is with matrices to come up with that final value. In this case, again, we started with three sets of scores. Uh, I should say five sets of scores. That was math, physics, and English. And then you can see how we find the covariances and the variances in those scores using matrix multiplication. And that's how it's done.